We are joined in on the line by a former uh, XPW and uh, Wrestling Society X uh, superstar. Uh, pretty much anywhere you can think of to wrestle, he's wrestled there. We have Luke Hawks today. How are you doing, Luke? What's up, man? You already know how it is, man. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now, um, you know, we have a bunch of questions. We have people who have uh, sent in a couple questions and might even get some callers. Uh, so if it's okay with you, I'd like to go ahead and get started. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Uh, we'll start out with a couple of uh, generic uh, generic questions. Um, but then, uh, you know, I have some questions that are uh, more... Um, more advanced? Yeah, a little more uh, style to you. Instead, so. instead of the typical, uh, where did you start wrestling, who trained you, blah, 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 the same ones that you interview always ask us. Yeah, we got a couple of those, but we'll, we'll, we'll go a little bit more in detail as well. Uh, um, now, uh, my, my first question is, uh, is you know, those same kind of questions. Uh, were you a wrestling fan growing up, and if so, who were some of your oh, favorites? Yeah. Oh, yeah, my whole life, man. Uh, I grew up, ain't nothing I wanted to be more than a wrestler. I mean, there was nothing I wanted to be other than a wrestler, actually. Uh, I grew up, I mean, my earliest memory wanted to be a wrestler was three years old, so... Uh, and I just followed it from there and chased it and chased it and you know, I never I never lost any kind of passion for it ever. It's my you know, it was in my blood, man. There was nothing they could do about it. Everybody always hated on it, everybody said, Oh, don't it's it's stupid, it's this, it's that, you know. And I didn't give a damn what anybody said. So uh I actually got a, a picture. My uh god my, my godmother and godfather gave me this year for my uh birthday. They had an old picture of me, like three years old, holding up a Hulk Hogan doll. So, also, you know, <laughs> that was nice to get because I don't really have too many, uh, you know, too too much memorabilia. And I didn't have a lot of. I grew up real poor, man, so I didn't have a lot of stuff when I was coming up. So, you know, just to have that's a good memory for me. Oh yeah, definitely. Now, who are some of your favorites growing up? Uh, well, as a child, you know, uh, it's like you know, of course, like Hogan, Warrior, you know, the demolition guys like that. When you know, when you're a kid, and then uh. As I started to get a little older and became more a fan of the the product, other than you know just the wrestling, other than the you know the, the glamour, uh, I started really getting into uh, Kurt Hennen, uh, Mr. Perfect, Rick Rude, uh, more of the heel stuff. Because uh, you know when you're a kid, of course you you go for the good guy, you go for the the, the flashy stuff. But uh, like I said, as I got smarter to the product and started you know just paying more attention to the whole product in general, uh, you know. Hannon and Rue were my favorite, man, hands down. Those guys, you know, couldn't be touched. Yeah, Kurt Henning was always one of my favorites as well. I guess when you get to your um, your uh, your teens, then that's when you, you know, also start just for the for the heck of it, just rooting for the bad guys anyways, right? Yeah, exactly, you know. <laughs> um, now, uh, you, you know, you were trained by Vic Grimes, but you had met him prior to your training beginning. Can you talk about that meeting? Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, it's a funny story, actually. I, I Actually, I don't think I've ever told it. I was at, uh, I used to help out with ECW down here all the time. Whenever, whenever wrestling shows would come around, you know, I was like, kid in the back, say, hey, you need to be help put up the ring, you need help uh, sell merchandise, what do you need help with? And they'd always, always do something. I got, became friends with Tommy Dreamer, became friends with uh, Rob Feinstein, became friends with uh, Just Incredible, those guys, you know, so they'd see me, and they'd always be like, oh, this kid always comes around, let him help out, blah, 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 you know. And because um, those were the guys, you know, they had a lot of guys in charge, right? Well, not in charge, but they had a lot of guys that were doing stuff for that company to make it succeed as a whole. So, uh, and uh, I was at one show in Baton Rouge. I brought a friend of mine, Darren, who's one of my best friends, actually. And uh, he was a big, big smart mark, and he knew everything from the magazines. And this is this is right before, I guess, the Internet was getting hot or as the Internet was just starting to get hot. And Darren was a huge Vic Grimes fan. Well, Darren was like, after the show, Vic was uh, Vic was putting up the ring, taking the ring down. And uh, he was actually in a WWE contract when he was doing that. But he still, you know, Vic never had an ego, so he was helping take the ring down. And uh, Darren's like, holy crap, there's Vic Grimes. You know, let's go talk to him. Let's go meet him. I said, man, I, you know, he had, he had uh, fought. I don't remember who he wrestled that night, but I remember he he – he got something stuck in him, and I was just like, nah, nah dude, you know, like like a, it was a fork or something. He might have been wrestling New Jack. He might not have been. I don't know. But I was like, nah, man, that dude looks like a jerk. I didn't go and talk to that dude, bro, because he got the stitch tattooed on his face, and he just had that mean look to him. And I was like, you know, because, you know, some guys look cool. You go up and say, hey, how you doing? Some guys it look intimidating. He's like, oh, that guy's a jerk. Don't talk to him. Probably don't want to waste time. And then I was like, come on, man. I've been following this guy in the Indies for years from back in the Cali days, blah, 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 when he got signed with WWF. So Darren talked me into it, 
we went over there, and Darren said, uh, you know, hey, Vic, how you doing? My name's blah, blah, blah. Vic started talking. I started talking to him, and then, man, we just hit it off. It was awesome. from there. Vic was, like, the coolest dude I ever met. We started BSing, and uh, we changed phone numbers, and uh, I told him I wanted to wrestle, and I was going to get trained and all this and that, and I knew some guys that were running some shows, so I was going to try and get him booked down here. And then after that, man, I just blew his phone up and aggravated the hell out of him until, uh, until he uh, helped me out, you know? It's all. It's always. I always find it funny who the guys who you you look at in the ring and everything, and you know because of the characters they play, they look like the biggest a holes in the world are usually the uh, the the most easygoing and easiest to talk to. It's kind of funny how that. Yeah, works. exactly, man. It's, it's crazy. You, you see some of these guys that you know, you think they're jerks and uh, they're, they're the coolest guys, and the guys you think are cool are simply jerks for no reason. Right now we have a caller actually from your home area code of uh, the five hundred four. So. Uh, Caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Hey. Woo Hawk, what's happening? D Man. What's happening? That's D Man. That's the man I was telling y'all about right there. What's happening, baby? Hey, I just wanted to call in. Um I was having some problems getting y'all over the uh, over the net, but I wanted to call the number and uh I just want to give people some insight on this guy. He uh you know as good as a wrestler as he is in the ring. Um, he's a better person outside the ring. And I cannot tell you all how many lives and people um, that look up to Luke and how many people, um, you know, how many lives he's he's affected just by just his friendship and his his kindness. And uh, he really is a wonderful person. He, uh, you know, he he's the kind of guy that, you know, I, I, I'm very close friends with Luke, and uh, I can attest, I can tell people that, you know, if they only knew what he went through, to get to where he is today, um, the amount of uh, roadblocks that he's had to overcome. You know, the indie circuit, it's brutal. You know, you can only imagine what it's like at the top, but the indie circuit is absolutely brutal. Uh, the egos, um, the backstab and the stakes, you can just go on and on. And, um, you know, Luke's had to go through all of it. And uh, it, hasn't, it hasn't changed him as a person, um, maybe even probably a little wiser. But uh, it hasn't hardened him to the business. It hasn't hardened him to people. And uh, I just wanted to let him know how proud I am. And uh, I know a lot of people are proud of him, too. And uh, how talented he is. Um, he's, just one, he's just one hell of a person. And uh, it's an honor for me to know him. And I'm proud of him because, you know, I know how he had to break into the business in XPW. I know what he went through. I know what he put his body through. And, um, you know, he went through the hardcore stuff. But, um, you know, Luke is really, he's a phenomenal talent in the ring. He's a phenomenal wrestler. And I know I'm putting him over, but, I, you know, I know I don't have to because I know people that see him, you know, whether it's DVDs or on the Internet or happen to see him on a show, they know. You know, you can just look at it and tell him how much talent he has. But, you know, hopefully he'll uh, hopefully he'll get his break because there's nobody in the business that deserves it more. And I just wanted to tell him, man, just, you know, keep on keeping on, man. And, uh, you know, I love your show, bro, so y'all keep it up. Take care. That's real. That's really good to hear. Um, you said you're having trouble here in the show, sir. Yeah, a little trouble so. clicking on, but uh, it's because my uh, my computer is probably a little bit older, and um, you know, uh, but you know, no problem because I'm listening to it on my phone, so we're all good. Too, okay. Too many of my dog website viruses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can also you go to. Uh, I was going to say, if you go to GoFightLive.tv, uh, we stream there as well, so you might have better luck over there. Beautiful. I'm heading over there right now. Okay. Thanks for calling. Uh, hey, take care. Love yeah, you thanks, show, man. D, thanks for the kind words, bro. You're my brother. You know that. You got it. Love you, big. Love you. Love you too, man. Now, uh, Luke, do you want to uh, respond to what, what your buddy there just told you? I mean, I mean, he basically calls it like it is. You know, uh, he knew. He knew. He's somebody. He's one of the only people that actually backed me from day one. But as far as the wrestling thing, you know, not not a lot of people did. You know. It's like uh, you tell a lot of a lot of people have different sites on you know, different views and opinions on wrestling, and then they either one way or the other way. You never, been there. nobody's ever really like, eh, if you want to do that. Most people are like, oh, you know, it sucks, it's stupid, or or, or oh, I love it, do it, that's awesome. And uh, I didn't get much of the I love it, do it, that's awesome comments, you know. More else, I was, you need to go to school, you need to do this, you need to do that, you know, uh, you need to get a real job, you need to be a electrician or a plumber or a manager somewhere, you know, and I was like, dude, that nine to five life ain't for me. You know, and that's reality. 
a lot of people think like that, but and in, 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 in they are nine to five workers. That, you know, that's what you got to make it to survive. But then some people just have it, and you know, if you work hard at what you want and you're good at it, don't don't kid yourself. If you know you're good at something and people tell you you're good at something, that's promise. Then work hard for what you want. But you know, don't tell me you're trying to be a wrestler and you know you're not going to the gym or you're not doing you know what you need to do to make it to the next level. It's like a football player. I mean, you can't play football if you don't practice. You know what I'm saying? Right, and it's just really good to hear, you know, with uh, in the particular line of business that you're in, that you're able to, you know, keep a friend like that all these years who, you know, you grew up with, who supported you, and, you know, it's just really rare to hear these days. Yeah, it is, man, and like like I said, D gave me, uh, D actually gave me $50, man, to put me in the game when I first started, because, uh, like I said, I was real poor, I, I grew up pretty rough, man, a lot of kids had it rough, so I ain't complaining, but uh, D knew what I went through, so... Uh, D didn't have, you know, D, D was D was struggling himself because he, you know, he had a, uh, he was the head of the household, you know, working with three kids, two kids and a wife, you know, being the only guy working and supporting the whole family. So uh, I mean, he didn't have much to give other than his friendship, and that's all I really needed. But I mean, when I told him I was going to train, he gave me fifty dollars and sent me out of my way and said, "Hey, take this to help you, whatever, you know. I know it ain't much, but you know, whatever it can get you, if he can get you an extra meal or whatever, you know, do it, you know." So he 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 totally backed me, and I'll never forgive. I mean, forget him for it, you know. Yeah, definitely. That's a perfect segue into my next question, which was about your training. Uh, you, you did train with Vic Grimes uh, a few years after you first met him. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, about, about meeting him and, uh, you know, just because you, you kept in contact and how it came about that he began training you? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, man, like I said, I aggravated the pit until he, uh, until he said, yeah. And I started uh, actually working with some of the indie shows down here. And uh, started a little training here, not much, man, because they were they were craft shows, you know. They were turds, man. Everybody down here was turds. Mm-hmm. They had a couple of good guys, two or three good guys, but for the most part, it was you know garbage. And uh, so I got I got some a little a little uh, knowledge under my belt, and then uh, it was a it was a funny story because high in the training was big. I uh, I used to talk to you know I, I kept in touch with a lot of guys. You know I've been friends with Ernest Miller. Since I was about 15 years old, uh, he, was, he was actually the first wrestler I met that I became friends with, and uh, you know many guys. But my my heart was set to go to ECW, and uh, I wanted to be in ECW so bad, man, because that's when I that was my teenage years, and you know they were revolutionizing wrestling, and uh, they were just giving something different that everybody else didn't have, and it was hard hitting, action packed. You know these guys were like real guys, not not fictional characters, and. Man, it was just like that. That was where I wanted to go. I wanted to go to ECW. So, uh, and I knew Rob Feinstein uh, had just like ECW had just ended, but uh, Rob had started Ring of Honor, and the Indies in the Northeast were real hot. That's when the Indies in the Northeast were just blowing up. Everything seemed to be happening in the Northeast. So Vic was telling me, "Dude, do not come to California. Go to the Northeast. Train out there. You know, work. You're gonna make money. You're gonna get so much work. There's not much going on in California." So I called Feinstein and said, hey, look, I want to train, blah, 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 more. You know, I want to come up there and get some work. And uh, the dudes, you know, I was always, I'd always been cool with them. And he was like, yeah, yeah, we're going to do it. You know, I'll hook you up with a job. Because at this time, this dude had the hottest Internet uh, tape company in the business. He was, you know, he had numerous stores all over the northeast area, in the malls and stuff. He's like, look, I can hook you up with a job. Because, you know, I used to help the T-shirts for this dude all the time. And, uh Basically, we made plans, dude. I saved up like two grand. I got in my car. I graduated high school. I drove straight. I had my son. You know, my son was uh, just born, and uh, I was married. I drove my car straight to uh, Philly. I talked to Rod. You know, everything was supposed to be set up. Uh, yeah, I was supposed to get Tajarian Super Crazy's apartment because they had just moved back to Mexico. Well, uh, they had, I think they both went to Mexico. But uh, they had both moved out because, you know, they were leaving the Northeast. So they had a lease and everything, so I was going to take over that. I got up there. Rob was ducking my calls. And then uh, I get up there, and, I, you know, I said, uh, eventually Doug Gentry, who passed away, R.I.P., man, who was a good friend of mine, too. Doug's like, man, Rob's ducking you. You know, I'm going to get on his ass or whatever, and then I'm going to tell him, you know, because, you know, he, he's supposed to help you out or what. So eventually Rob answers my call, and he goes, oh, hey, uh, yeah, I've been busy. I've been in meetings, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that job I was going to give you, the dude is not quitting, so I don't have a job for you. And um, as far as the apartment goes, uh, just go find one. they got a ton of apartments out here. <laughs> now, here I am in Philadelphia, 
I know absolutely nobody other than a few ECW guys, you know, and, uh, like, you know, Rob and Doug, and then I'm thinking I got a job. The whole reason I'm going to Philly is because I'm thinking I got an apartment, I got a job, everything's going to fall on my lap, I'm going to start training, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and this dude just totally blows me off, you know. Dude, I was I was hurt, I was pissed, I was, you know, I, I didn't know, what, I was an 18-year-old kid who had no idea what to do because I didn't know anybody in that region. Like I said, I didn't have anything, you know, I had some money in my, I had my money in my car, and, uh, <laughs> The funny thing was I had already wrestled Vic once. I flew out to uh, Cali and wrestled Vic. With, you know, I, I didn't have much experience with Vic. I flew out there and hung out with him. And uh, we wrestled and He trained me for a few days. And uh, so I'd already had that under my belt. And I remember where Vic lived. And I had his address and everything written down. So without telling Vic, I drove straight from Philadelphia to Oakland, California. <laughs> and I showed up at his door and knocked on his door. And uh, he, he answered. I, I'll never forget the day, dude. I, I He answers the door. He sees me. I didn't call him. I didn't tell him anything. First thing, as soon as he answers the door, he goes, you're a moron. <laughs> so uh, to this day, <laughs> to this day, he calls me moron. That's my nickname. So, uh, you know, cause, uh, and that's how I got it because I drove from Philly to Cali without calling and just had it all, you know, like, hey, either I'm going to get this or I'm not going to get it, one or the other. And I wasn't taking no for an answer. Uh, you know, he knew I wanted it, so when I got out to Cali, man, he helped me get a job. He helped me get a place to stay. He just put me on the map, and then, uh, you know, I was training hard with him and working hard, and I moved my family out there. And, uh, you know, that was it, dude. So we, it, it was on and popping from there, and we started working together a lot. And, you know, the more I learned, the more I hustled. You know, I learned about the game more. I learned about how to interact with certain guys. And I always had a mouth on me, so uh, he learned me how to keep my, you know, to keep my temper down and keep, you know, keep – keep my mouth from getting me in trouble because I was always one of those guys who said how I felt instead of being, you know, instead of sitting there and shutting up which sometimes when I should have. But it's something I wouldn't change because, you know, they had so many guys getting screwed over. I didn't want to get taken advantage of. And, I, you know, and that was just for me growing up. I got taken advantage of a lot my whole life. And as I got older, I learned, you know, I learned how not to and how, you know, to, uh, you know, fend for myself. I always had to fend for myself, but I learned how to, you know, work for myself and work make, make things work for me instead of against me and turn a bad situation into something positive. Now, um, do you have any memories of your first match? Yeah. My first match uh, was actually in Florida. It was uh, it was against this piece of trash, man, a garbage guy. <laughs> uh, it was funny because uh, my first match was for uh, ECMO, who was, uh, who was, uh, who was his name, Umanga in WWE, and Rosie who was uh, Matt, the Samoans. They, they used to be three-minute warning. They were friends of mine when I was training because they, they lived in Pensacola, which is about three hours from New Orleans. So when I started doing, uh, breaking into shows down here before before I started messing with before I was training with Vic, you know, they, they seen I had some talent. So uh, I was actually reffing down here. And they said, man, why are you reffing? You, you you got talent, bro. You can probably do, you know, out-wrestle half these wrestlers in, in this region. So why are you reffing? And I was like, man, nobody nobody wants to teach me anymore or, or, or uh, you know, or, or give me a chance. And they're like, well, dude, what, what you know now, you can smoke half these guys, I'm telling you. So I said, we'll give you a match if you come drive to Pensacola for free. So I said, well, hell yeah, I'll come drive to Pensacola for free. It's only three hours, you know. So um, I wrestled some garbage guy, and, you know, they put me over, and things were good. And then uh, the second match, you know, I did a battle royal with them, and then uh, – I wrestled a few shows for them. That, that's where I actually had my first matches at before I ended up moving to Cali. So, uh, and then, you know, those guys tried to help me out a little bit. You know, they put me on. They gave me a chance. You know, they they couldn't do nothing more than give me a chance. And that was, that was before. Soon after, they went up to WWE and they became three minute warning. Well, they was on the Indies. They were in Memphis. So that's when WWE still had Memphis developmental. Now, um, do you have any fond or perhaps not so fond memories of your time with the Indies? Oh, dude, there's always there's always uh, fond and, and, and not so fond memories, as you say, uh, dude. Uh, there, there's been, I mean, I, I can tell you times when I when I was you know doing really well and things I hated, and I can tell you times when I was doing really you know really bad and things I things I loved. So it's you know I can go for days about that. I mean, I I could start an XPW. Uh, I mean, I loved being an XPW because it was an opportunity for me. I didn't really want to do death matches. But, you know, I hated working for Rob Black because he was a douchebag, you know? So, 
Yeah, that was one of my next questions. Was your thoughts on Rob Black? Uh, but first, um, that that drive that you made out to uh, California and showed up on Vic Grimes's uh, front door was that how you first got in contact with XBW? Yeah, yeah. I uh, what what happened then? I, I was I was training with Vic, so I would go to a few shows with him. And uh, this is how I got to XBW. I was going to shows with him, and I'd wrestle him on some indie shows and. Uh, I, I, you know, I was, I, I'd already been in the business. When, when I was in XPW, I had been in business two years when I first got my break in XPW. What happened was uh, we went to a show, and Vic said, hey, look, this is my student. This is a match we just had uh, last month or whatever. Take a look at it. So they were like, okay, uh, cool. So they took a look at it. And then uh, the day before we left for another XPW show one time, Vic calls me up, and he goes, uh, I got some good news for you. And I'm thinking, you know, I didn't know what it was because, you know, that was, he was one of my best friends. He still is. So, uh, you know, I did everything. I went to every show with him. I worked with him. We worked at the same company. I lived close to him. So I, I really didn't know what he was talking about. He just said he had some good news. So we met up, and uh, he says, uh, XPW is going to use you tomorrow. And I like to uh, use the bathroom with myself because I was so excited. You know, I was so pumped up because, that's when XPW was the number, th- you know, number three company in the world, uh, well, in the United States, you know, because they were the only company with DVDs out in stores and videotapes in stores and everything. And it was a really big deal. And uh, whether you liked the product or not, it was a huge deal and a huge opportunity, especially for some guy who was just on the Indies, which the Indies weren't doing much except in the Northeast, you know. So uh, I was excited, man. So uh, they called me up and they said, hey, we've got this idea. It might only be one show. We don't know. Uh, we need a tag team. We're going to call you all the altar boys, and we're going to tag team you with this other kid that's in the school down here at the FPW school, and uh, we like your work. We seem to take, you know, you did a good job, blah, blah, blah. And I went down there. We did it together, and that was it, man. I had a, uh, I guess I shined a little more than he did, and uh, they actually were going to bring us back the next show, and they were like, man, I this is a good job, and the, the, the Internet was buzzing about you. We want to bring you back, but we want to separate y'all and do some singles match when you in uh they wanted me to do death matches, and I didn't really want to do death matches. And but Vic was like, "Dude, you're not at the point right now where you can tell him no to do it. We'll figure out a way to protect you." And Vic was actually pissed off about it. Vic called him up and chewed him out. Like, "This is my student. How are y'all going?" Because they actually asked me to do death matches. And Rob Black was like, "Oh, well, you know, his attitude was, who cares? You know, he wants to be a wrestler. You got to do all this stuff to be a wrestler." So, which in a way he's right, but in a way in a way he's not right. You know what I'm saying? Like he didn't he he, he didn't have any respect for the business at all. So or, or, or how it's, how it's done. And uh, so I, I did it, and you know the, the other guy actually didn't even show up, and I, he actually disappeared. So after that, man, like like I was just a regular. I got in with the guys. I got in with Kevin Kleinrock and uh, Smiley and GQ Money, who was the, uh, you know the vice president and the other in the Booker. So they uh, man they 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 fell in love with me, and they just kept me around and put me on. So. We actually had uh, GQ Money on the show last week. Um, now, in regards to uh, Rob Black, you know, you were saying that you uh, you, you didn't care much for him, and um, you being uh, a young guy coming into the business, is that something that you knew that that was not how you do business, or was it something that being a, being a young guy, one would say a rookie in the business, um, although you weren't really a rookie, um, made me inexperienced that you just kind of did what you could, or was, was Vic there to kind of tell you this is not the way to do business? Man, no, I knew, I knew, but like the more I, you know, I gave, I gave the guy a chance, and, uh, you know, like saying, like it was intimidating for me, I won't lie, because he was the boss, and it was a big company, and you know, everybody wanted to be there. Everybody was trying to get booked there. And I didn't – I was intimidated, but I, I knew at the same time the guy was a scumbag. But I, I did my best to get along with him. And I wasn't really – like I said, I was never really good at biting my tongue, man. Like, if I felt something was wrong, you know, I'd always say how it is. And I, I really don't want to spend a lot of time talking about him, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, he has no part of my career. He has no, you know, mem- memories in my head of, of any, anything positive of him ever came in, in, in memories of me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I had nothing – good to say about the guy. I'll just give you one story. We're in Philly. The guy had to pick me up from the airport and uh, because him and Shane Douglas were there. And uh, him and Shane Douglas had to pick me up from the airport because they were at the airport at the same time. So I rode with them. So I'm in the back seat. It's me, Shane Douglas, uh, Damien, who is uh, one, of, one of the merchandise guys. And, uh, you know, uh, and I'm riding in the back seat with Rob. 
And I'm, you know, I'm just being cordial. I say, hey, Rob, how you doing? How's your family? Blah blah blah. So, you know, he curses a little bit. You know, you know, who gives an f how my family is? Blah blah blah. You know, whatever. He was real, real scumbag, man. So I, I'm just like getting along. I'm trying to get along. I'm trying to, you know, shoot the shoot the shit with him. You know. And he says, uh, he tells me, uh, can you believe this? And I'm like, believe what? He goes, believe that I'm actually sitting back here convers- conversating with you. And he was serious. I'm like, well, what you what, what you mean? You know, and he's uh, he says, well, you know, you you're green. You only been in the business a few years. You know, I don't talk to anybody in the business unless you're a top star. And then this guy was serious. Now he told me this, and I said, what? And he's like, I, I don't I don't waste my time talking to anybody in the business unless you're a top star. You got to be somebody for me to talk to you. So, I you know, I went off on him. I told him, you know, I, I called him a scumbag. You know, I just said a couple things about him, and uh, and you know he. he I, I guess at that point I kind of earned a little respect for him because he told me that because I stood up to him. And I was like, dude, I don't care who you are. You own the company or not. You know, you ain't going to treat me like I'm a piece of trash, you know. I ain't scared of you. You don't intimidate me. I, I mean, I was 140 pounds soaking wet back then, dude. It was hard for me to even wrestle. I should have been grateful for the opportunity, which I was. But I wasn't going to let some scumbag talk to me any way he wanted to, you know. And uh, he actually gave me a little respect for that. And, uh, you know, he kind of... Uh, I guess took a little liking to me after that, and uh, you know he kind of got off my back a little bit. But at the same time, you know I, I don't think he ever really cared for me. But I had Kevin and Smiley pushing for me, and uh, that's how they ended up putting the belt on me and doing all that stuff. Right now, um, because you were kind of like uh, Vic Grimes's boy, so to speak, uh, was there ever right. any heat there between you and New Jack? Oh yeah, yeah, dude. Me and New Jack, uh, me and Jack almost got into a couple fist fights, and. Uh, the first New Jack story was uh, uh, I was in the dressing room at XPW before I started wrestling there, and I was going to make a food run for the guys. And uh, Jack was the last person I asked. And I said, hey, Jack, uh, you know, I'm going to run the store for the guys. Do you want anything? Jack just looked at me stupid. And then, uh, I, I was, you know, I'm young and whatever. I said, hey, Jack, I'm, you know, do you need anything from the store? I'm leaving. So he said, uh who are you? I said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm with Vic. I'm Vic's student, you know, I'm Vic's boy. And he goes, oh, so you, uh, you suck Vic off. You do this, blah, blah, blah. You know, starting, you know, just being, trying to pump me out in the locker room. So, uh, I was about to, you know, I, I, I was about to go off, man. I wasn't scared. You know, I ain't scared of nobody. So I was about to go off. And Vic came and grabbed me. And then Vic pulled me aside. He said, do not do anything. He's like, you were trying to get a job here. Do not, you know, Vic knew. So he's like, do not do anything. You're trying to get a job here. Just get out the locker room now before you, you know, before your mouth puts you, you know, and you ruin it. You ain't going to be a job, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, and that was it, man. I, I, so that I got into it with Jack there a little bit. And then uh, next thing you know, uh, Jack got fired after that show because Supreme even came. Supreme came up to me and he goes, you know, Supreme like me goes, look, man, don't worry about that, blah blah blah. You know, dude, you know, he's this, he's that, you know, and uh, you know, you're a good kid. You know, everybody here likes you. Just blow it off. You know, don't even pay no attention to it. So I did, you know, and then uh, it kind of a bad taste in my mouth. So then I ran into Jack at NWA Wildside, and uh, and Jack, me and, me and Jack had a few words there, but we were both close with Bill Barons. And uh, we had a few words there. We didn't get into it or anything. We just had a few words. And then uh, the next time Jack came up, well, we had worked on Wrestling Society X together. Well, the, the, the pilot. I mean, I did a ton of shows with Jack. So uh, then the last time I seen him was at Wildside. And uh, we talked up there. And we basically just watched everything. You know, he called me outside. And uh, he's like, look, you know, I know uh, we had this, that, and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, you know, I, I know you're doing your thing. I'm doing my thing. I you know, I got, you know, he told me he had respect for me. He told me, you know, I'm coming up and blah, blah, blah. And we just squashed him. Everything's been cool since. Okay. Now, um, for the most part, uh, with the exception of relationships with Rob Black and New Jack, what was the locker room atmosphere in XPW like? Uh, it was cool, man. I mean, I, I made a lot of friends there, you know, who who my brothers now to this day. Uh, it was cool, man. You, you had everybody around. You had, you know, you had stars around. You had porn stars around. It was it was an atmosphere that's intimidating to a to a young guy, to say at least, you know. I mean, to a to a guy who who came from nothing, to hanging out with star people you see on TV, people you see in adult videos, to you know musicians and everything. So it was it was definitely uh, a a stepping stone and something you know something positive and 
no matter who they were, you know, they they were they were somebody. So it was, it was cool. And then to get you know get the game handed down to me from some of those guys like Supreme was awesome because I mean you could love him or hate him and he, you know and say oh well, he's just a death match guy. Supreme is a great guy, man. He uh, you know he could have took advantage of me in, in in those matches. You know when when I didn't know what I was doing in death matches. You know and he 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 had a tom underneath his belt and instead of you know trying to hurt me. And, uh, you know, just really beat me up to where, you know, some of those guys do, to where you can't walk. But, you know, I mean, after those matches, you, you know, you, you're hurting for weeks anyway. But instead of Supreme just, you know, going all out and trying to kill me, he actually taught me the correct ways to do things, you know what I'm saying, and, and how to uh, protect yourself and how to do, you know, the, to the best you can. So, you know, I, I, I respect Supreme to the day I die, so. Now, were you expecting a little bit more uh, success, a little bit more push to come to you after you became king of the death match? Yeah, but it got cut short because that that was my call. Because uh, I got cut short because, uh, well, not only XPW went under not too much longer after that, but uh, at, when, as soon as I won a belt, I, I, I had a little pole put in skin, and I really didn't care because I'd already stood up to Rob, and, you know, they put a belt in me, I made a little name for myself. I had told them that I didn't want to do death matches no more. So that's why the belt was kind of taken from me so quick because that was my call. I told Kevin I was just uncomfortable doing it. I didn't want to be known as a death match guy. I worked too hard to, uh, to you know what I'm saying, to, to, to all my wrestling and to better myself. And, uh, I had, you know, all of a sudden all these indie bookings started getting thrown at me to do death matches, and I never ever took one of them because, you know, I didn't want to be known as a death match guy. I was like, you know, as soon as I wanted a belt, man, they came out the woodwork looking for me. Oh, we want you to do a death match here. We want you to do this. And I just, I turned everything down. So it sounds like your relationship with Kevin Kleinrock was almost the opposite of your relationship with Rob. Is that right? Oh, completely. Kevin, Kevin's another one of my brothers, man, to this day. Kevin, uh, Kevin's a man. And uh, speaking to Kevin, I'll go ahead and plug. you got Viva Lucha on October 15th to Friday on pay-per-view. Y'all check that out, man. Kevin's been working real hard on that. Have you talked to him about appearing on some of those shows? Yeah, yeah, I talk to Kevin a lot. Uh, man, I talk to Kevin every couple of days. He's one of the guys, you know, Kevin is like a, a father in this business. And Kevin and uh, Bill Barron are actually the only two uh, promoter guys I trust in this business, you know, the only guys who've never screwed me over. Kevin always makes sure, Kevin and Bill always make sure I get taken care of and uh, everything's right for me, you know. So I love him to death. And Kevin, he's a role model for me. He's, he's a great father, you know. He was a good husband. He did, did do work so hard, you know, to, to make sure guys like me have work and uh, other guys have work and, you know, he never gives up on the business. He's somebody who loves the business. And, you know, when many guys crack under pressure, Kevin works harder under pressure. So much respect to him. He was on a while back right before uh, the first Viva Lucha um, event. Um, now, you've been very open in your criticism of Shane Douglas. Uh, how did that begin? And uh, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, dude. I mean, basically, it, it's what it is, bro. Shane, Shane's another one, man. Shane's a scumbag. Shane, uh Another guy I had no respect for, and I could see why, you know, he was stuck up Rob Black's ass. Uh, you know, I, I had a lot of respect for Shane coming up, all right? I, you know, I, I'll call it like a seed. I'll tell it like it is. When Shane broke into the ECW thing, and, you know, he was the guy cursing and saying all this stuff other people would stay and say and shooting, and, you know, it was awesome, man, because it was like, wow, is this guy really saying this? But at the same time, Shane was never – the best wrestler in the world. Shane was a guy who, on that card in the ECW with the talent at the time, he was the only guy uh, capable of having a, 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 a crappy match back then. You know what I'm saying? Shane, Shane always had to have someone to feed off of a girl or another wrestler or, you know, the triple threat. Shane, Shane was, wasn't one of those guys who can just do things on his own, and you've seen that when he went to WCW and he went to WWE or WWF, excuse me, at the time. Because... You know, you take Shane, you take Shane away from saying uh, the F word or the S word or calling somebody a a, a, a bitch, you know, and then you, you got nothing. You can't say, you know, because Shane, let's, I call a spade a spade. Shane can talk. Shane's a well speaker, but when it comes to taking the cursing out, Shane can't talk to save his life. You know what I'm saying? Nobody cares. That's the thing. And here we are. Well, like I said, what is it? 15 years later, this dude's saying the same thing that he said back then. It's like it's like listening to a tape recording or reading a book. You're gonna get the same thing. I mean, grow up, really. You know what I'm saying? This dude's, four, what is he, 46, 47, and he's talking about starting a revolution and leading a revolution. And, and a dude, you know, a revolution into what? I mean, is he going to go against WWE? He's going to go against TNA? He's going to go against what? You know, what's he going to start? He's 47 years old. He looks horrible. He can't wrestle anymore. You know, so what's this dude? What does this dude have to offer other than a mind? You know, 
I'm, I won't lie, the guy's a smart guy. I'm sure he's a great booker. Uh, but at the same time, you know, he, the problem is he has a huge ego, and he wants to be the head of something, and he wants to lead the pack, and he needs no one to step down. See, he, that's something he complained and bitched about, the stepping down, and guys not giving him a chance, and yet he tries to do the same thing to everybody else, you know. So put a bull in him, dude. You know what I'm saying? The dude's done. Give it up. Yeah, it was funny because he had that uh, rivalry with Ric Flair for all those years, and it was kind of he went through the same thing he complained to Ric Flair about. Now you spent a little bit of time in TNA. Uh, did you did you run into Shane there? Did uh, anything happen there? Dude, I ran into Shane. I ran into Shane so much, and uh, you know I worked with Shane a lot. I had a personal relationship with Shane back then. You know I was I was cool with him, but Shane was a douchebag, and I'll tell you why Shane was a douchebag. Because all right, now it's no secret. You know, like I said, everybody needs to know. You gotta improve. You gotta get better. You can't just stay in this game. You can be, be the same thing. You gotta switch it up. You gotta change gimmicks. You gotta change styles. You gotta, you know, you gotta adapt to the environment and the time. And you know, that's what survival. Like I said before, I'm a strong believer. It's not survival of the fittest. It's uh, survival of those who can adapt to the environment. You know, I was 140 pounds when I started off. I'm 200 pounds now. I worked hard and busted my ass in the gym to get bigger and get better because I knew that's what it took. And, and you know, it took me a while to do it, but. I had to do it. If I knew I was going to survive in wrestling and make a bigger name for myself, I had to do it. Instead of guys like Shane telling you back then, hey, uh, this is what you need to do to get better, or this is what you need to do to step up in wrestling, this is what you need to do to make it, guys like that wouldn't help you, dude. They didn't care. They didn't give you the time of day. Or they'd say, if you'd ask them a question, Shane would say, uh, oh, yeah, like I asked Shane one time we were at TNA, and I said, hey, man, uh, I, I really want to get a job here. So I asked the XDW close. I said, uh, you know, what can I do to make it better? Shane's like, you're not going to get better. You just need to, uh, what he said, uh, just they, they're too old book to give up or something like that. And I was just like, what? You know? Like, instead of saying, hey, maybe go hit the gym, maybe change your gimmick, maybe do this, you know, he was just so negative, like, hey, you know, trying to protect, I guess, his spot and his friends' spots that, you know, he wouldn't offer any advice. And I was like, coming from a guy who I just worked with for months at a time, you know, blah, 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 I had, you know, a, a somewhat business relationship with, you know, because he was the leader of XBW during my time there. So he was the mouth, he was the voice, and uh, he was, you know, it's not only that, dude, like, uh, he ripped us off, he ripped guys off of the pay, he ripped us off from ticket match pay from the shows he ran in Philly and Pittsburgh. There's just so many, you know, negative things I could say about the guy. I got so much more negative stuff to say than I can positive about the guy, and, you know, Somebody needs to shut the dude up. Like I said, he wants to complain a bitch about somebody. You know, tell him, tell him to call me out and see what happens. No. I guarantee you he won't come anywhere around me, bro, because I ain't a 60-something-year-old man. He ain't going to pump me out, you know? Right, yeah. Um. Now, you've also been very critical of TNA. Is that something that began when you were working for them, or what's the situation with Yeah, I mean, TNA, dude, TNA was always real clickish. Every time I, I went up there and – uh. I mean, this is the thing about TNA. They got a lot of good guys up there, but they got a lot of bad guys up there, too. You know what I'm saying? And, and they hire guys for the wrong reasons, like a lot of people do, because uh, they're somebody's friend or they're this or that, you know, instead of hiring talented guys. They don't really branch out when it comes to hiring guys other than from within. You never see, like, guys come up there. Every now and then you do, you know, but you see it's, it's in – who cares about Sting and Scott Steiner and these guys who have been on top forever? Let these young guys, let the Alex Shelley's, the Chris Sabins, the, uh, the, uh, the Young Bucks, who uh, uh, I forget what the name of TNA is, you know, but uh, you know, let, let the younger guys come. They give the younger guys a chance, and they gave them a chance, like with, with like AJ and a few other guys. But for, for the most part, you know, they still spotlight on these guys who can't do anything now. I mean, Hogan's Hogan, and he's always going to be Hogan, and you got to give him his time. But at the same time, dude, you gotta, you know, you gotta give these other guys chances, man. You can't. You're looking at TNA. They got 60 guys on the roster, and uh, they got 60 guys on the roster, and they got what a, a one-hour TV show or two-hour TV show once a week, you know? Right. Now, 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 don't get me wrong. TNA's a great place, and it's a good opportunity to give guys a job. We need places like that. I'm not at all complaining about that. But at the same time, you know, push some of the younger guys more. Build up your company around more of younger guys. You know, you did it with AJ. You seen what you got out. Now start doing it with other guys. Quit showcasing Sting so much. Quit showcasing Cactus Jack so much. Uh, quit showcasing, you know, Hulk Hogan so much. Let Hogan 
you know, and I'm sure Hogan's in charge of what Hogan does. And, you know, Hogan, like I said, Hogan's Hogan. Hogan's money. But at the same time, push these younger guys more. Show more of the younger guys. Show more of, you know, the better matches. You know, nobody cares. Nobody, dude, I, I, I don't care about, uh, I, I couldn't even tell you half of them because I can't watch the product. Dude. I turn the product off. It seems so, to me, I, I'm, I'm sorry, it seemed to me like they tried to do that a couple years ago with uh, Samoa Joe. That didn't really work out, so that's when they kind of went to the uh, the established uh, older guys. And, you know, there's so much, like you said, there's so much great young talent there that's rarely being used, especially on a two-hour show. Like, uh, the Young Bucks, Generation Me is what they're called now. You know, they right. they recently uh, made a heel turn, but prior to that, it's probably been like six months since they've been on TV, something like that. So it was yeah. just, some, someone like that who's a great talent, and they left, you know, they left Ring of Honor for that. It, it didn't seem to make a lot of sense to, you know, give them all this money, send them there, and all they were doing was working the house shows. See, that's the problem with TNA, too. It's like I think TNA pulls most of their new guys from Ring of Honor instead of shopping around. For new guys, you know what I'm saying. So that, that, to me, that's always been a problem. Uh, you know, branch, branch out a little more. And I mean, I, I had the same issue, not only with me, but I think you know what I'm saying. As far as I go, what, what I get pissed off, I, I've been very successful in my career. So have I reached the top yet? No, I've been to the top. Have I made top money yet? No. But I'm, I've, I've had a very successful indie run and wrestling run. And not only now, like I've, I've broken into the movie business and I'm killing the movie business. I'm doing you know movie after movie now. Uh, but as far as like wrestling magazines go, it's a sub, I think it's a southern thing that nobody comes to the south and gets guys. Wrestling, you never see wrestling magazines talk about anybody from the south. You never see you know guys like me or Steve Anthony or uh, guys you probably never heard of like Joe Kane or Kevin Northcutt or Bruce Santini or uh, you know Gabriel who was Chad Parham or Seth Delay, guys from Wildside and Anarchy. You never see any kind of coverage from these from the magazines on these guys when you should. You know, it's, I feel like the South is so neglected when it comes to that, when it comes to getting guys pushes in, in, in the big league shows and in the wrestling magazines and on the Internet. You never hear anything come out of the South. And it's, it, 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 it aggravates me, man, because we don't get the respect we deserve. You know, because for as many sh- shitty guys down here they have, they have a ton of good guys, you know. Right. Now, um, do you have any uh, – what are your feelings on Dixie Carter? Dixie, uh, I don't know much about her, so I can't really comment. I mean, on my 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 only comment to, about Dixie was uh, I was at TNA once, and it was a Christmas party, and uh, I was invited down for a show right when they moved to Florida, and uh, they actually didn't even use me, and uh, we, we didn't even do a spot, but they called me down because they wanted to do a spot with me, and uh, they ended up canceling it when I got there. But uh, they had a Christmas party after, and I was cool. I've always been cool with Jeff. Jeff's always been a cool guy, and uh. I didn't have a, a, a pass to go to the Christmas party. So all the guys were like, you know, I knew all the guys. So like, hey, you know, I'll see you at the party, see you at the party. And uh, I, said, I told somebody, I'm not, I'm not going when I don't have a pass. But they went over to Dixie and said, hey, uh, can we get, you know, a pass for Luke to get this one? Like Dixie was just start breaking in with him and stuff. She said, can we get a pass for Luke to uh, get in the Christmas party? And she was like, no, he's not part of our company. He's not, you know, he's not allowed there. You know, so I kind of felt like, you know, well, that was kind of crappy. You know, you invited me down. I'm, you know, I was part of the show even though I didn't even do nothing that show. Blah blah blah. So then uh, Jeff had actually said, "Hey, uh, you going to the party?" I told him what happened. I said, "No, Dixie said I wasn't invited." And Jeff was like, "No, dude, you're definitely invited. Come on, you know what I'm saying?" So huh. that's so, that's that's the only interaction I've ever had with Dixie. Okay, so you didn't really deal with her during your run there. Yes. So I, yes, I can't say anything negative or positive about her. Okay. Um... Now you are, you also spent were in the short lived uh, Wrestling Society X on MTV. Uh, why is it that you feel that promotion was uh, was so short lived after all the uh, the hype on that starting up? Uh, to be honest with you, from everything I was told, is because uh, a, a woman that took over on the MTV market and uh, she wasn't a wrestling fan, so that was one of the first things she nixed. It wasn't had nothing to do with ratings. I mean, because if you look at ratings, we were up there. We weren't getting super high ratings, you know, but we were up there with a lot of the other shows, you know. No reason for them to cancel us. So, uh, you know, they I guess they wanted more of, uh, you know, 16 and Pregnant or Teen Mom or all the other stupid <laughs> shows, you know. So, they, you know, she said, uh, you know, she said, and I, I know one thing was uh, they said they were, it was too violent and uh, they didn't want to risk any more lawsuits that they already got from Jackass because they had a ton of lawsuits from Jackass. So... 
I guess they got over that because now they have the uh, Lucha Libre USA on there. Um, I guess so, man. But it's on MTV too, right? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So I mean, uh, you know, who knows, man? They put a lot of money into us. So, I, and I thought it was a good thing. I, I, the show wasn't the best, but uh, you know, as far as what MTV took over and they added the stupid graphics and the, the ring shaking and all that, I didn't like any of that. And I didn't like, you know, how it was so chopped up and you didn't see the selling. But it, it's another thing that gave some actually high-paced, good wrestling matches with some really talented younger guys that, you know, you probably didn't get to see on a regular basis. You might not even never heard of, but then after that show came out, you heard of them, you seen them, and you're like, hey, maybe I like this guy. This guy's good, this blah, 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 you know? So. All right. Now, um, you've also done some work as an enhancement talent for WWE. How does that come about? Did they just call you when they're in the area or? Uh, yeah, I've, I've always had a, a really good relationship with WWE. I still do to this day. Uh, I work with WWE regular. And, uh, you know, I, I can tell you, honestly, that's probably the best locker room I've ever been in. Besides, I mean, of course, I love XPW. It's my brothers, and uh, I love, you know, being at Wild Side and, you know, places like that. But uh, when I go to WWE, it's just everything's professional. I've never felt out of place there. I've never felt, you know, uh, discriminated against. I've never felt anything negative there. Uh, every time I go up there, like I said, it's a positive experience. Uh, you know, I, I'm well liked. They use me. They, you know, use guys I recommend to them. Uh, you know, it's always been a good, good, strong working relationship, and uh, I look forward to more, more, you know, more working relationships with them. Who, who is it that you typically speak with when they give you that call? Uh, when well, that is a new chick, I actually I don't even remember her name, but hmm. uh, you know, I I used to deal with with, with all the guys before with Dreamer with Nova. Uh, you know, and like I said, I, I go back into long relationships with those guys. Uh, even, you know, uh, when I first started, it was Dr. Tom Pritchard when he was up there. And, and uh, those guys, you know what I'm saying? Those guys, when I, when I was dealing with wrestlers, the office is kind of switched now. They, they don't really have too many wrestlers in those spots anymore. And they're bringing in more guys with college degrees. So I, I'll, I'll use my usual uh, call up there or, or, or email, and then uh, I'll get on. And, you know, they'll call me and say, hey, we're in the area. This date, uh, are you available? So, no, no. One of those matches, one of the first uh, matches you worked for WWE, um, you tag teamed with the late Chris Canyon. Do you have any memories of him? I have a ton of memories, man. Chris is one of my best friends in the business, bro. You know, Chris is Chris is an awesome guy, and uh, man, I, I miss him. I, I won't lie, bro. I still have many nights crying sometimes thinking about him. Uh, he was Chris is a guy. You know, he had his demons, but Chris was a guy who would give you the shirt off his back. You know. Some people didn't like him because he was gay or he was outspoken or he was just. But Chris was a guy. If it wasn't for Chris Canyon, dude, half the cruiserweights that you know today who are top cruiserweights wouldn't have jobs. You know what I'm saying? Chris was the guy who was in WCW in charge of that. Chris was the guy who hired the Shane, the uh, Shane Helms, uh, the Shannon Moores, the Billy Kidmans, all those guys. You know, Chris is the guy who brought those guys in. So, and a, and a ton of other guys. So it was. It was man, like like I said, without Chris, dude, I, I couldn't even tell you, you know, what, where where the cruiserweight division character would be. Now, um, another another one of your matches there, you worked a uh, handicap match uh, against the Big Show. Your tag team partners were the Naturals, Chase Stevens and Andy Douglas. Uh, did you have any yeah. feelings of, on uh, the Naturals? Uh, I've always been good friends with them. Chase is, uh, you know, I keep in touch with Chase, me and Chase. Chase was actually one of the first guys at TNA uh, that, you know, I started hanging out with when I first went up there. Chase, uh, Chase when, when I first started going and doing enhancement role to TNA and uh, trying to get on, Chase was doing the same thing that Black and Nationals were. So, uh, you know, me and Chase kind of always, we got a lot of the same interests, so we, we kick it a lot, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um now you spoke a little bit about you doing stunt work in movies. Can can you talk about how you got into that and uh, what, what are some oh, yeah, of the yeah, movies yeah. you uh, No, up? I do a lot of I, I do a lot of stunt and acting. Uh, and like I said, we got a lot of work in this area, so I'm I'm blowing it up now. Uh, I actually just got injured. I'm, I'm coming off injury. I'll be about another month. I'm uh, I'm actually healed now, but I'm gonna give it about another month until uh, until uh, I get back in the ring and do any movie work just to make sure I'm fully healed. I don't really injure myself. So uh, I broke in. Let's see. When I was doing Wrestling Society X, uh, Vampiro offered, he was working on a movie, or going to start working on a movie down in Mexico. And uh, Vamp seen me, you know, and uh, 
Vampa actually labeled me as a locker room leader there, and he wanted, you know, to do more. And we've seen a lot in me. He said, look, uh, you know, and he's one of the guys who told me, hey, start working out more, start doing this, but you definitely got a kid, blah, 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 you know, and uh, I'll help you any way I can. He said, well, I got this movie coming up, you know, and uh, he talked to the director and everything. He said, in the show, and he said, the director was telling him it was awesome. He said, let's put Luke in this movie, along with Chaos and Mary Night Delaire. So uh, we went and I went down to Mexico. I did the movie. And uh, gave me a taste for more movies, and I wanted to do more. I just didn't know how to really break off into it. So I was L.A. was one of my second homes. Every time I go out to L.A., you know, I meet people, I do things. Uh, Ernest Miller's the same way. Ernest Miller's doing a lot of movies. He was in the rest of He's got a lot of big things going on. So Ernest said, uh, I went and met Ernest out there one day. Ernest hooked me up with some people out there who hooked me up with some people in Louisiana, which therefore hooked me up with stunts and. You know, it goes on and on and on from there. We just started getting connections, and I broke in. I went to stunt school here. I trained on, while I was, uh, excuse me, while I was wrestling a little bit. Uh, I went to stunt school here while I was training, while I was still wrestling. You know, on, on the weekends, I'd go, I didn't have wrestling. I'd go training with stunts, and, and uh, sometimes during the weekend, you know, basically just kept it up, and that was how I got some opportunities from the movies. Now, you were talking about the wrestler a second ago, and as as someone who spent a lot of their career in the independents, what were your thoughts on the wrestler? Did you feel it was uh, so, somewhat accurate portrayal? Yeah, I mean, it was good. Uh, I, I think a lot was cut out, but, uh, you know what I'm saying, like they left it. Excuse me, I might be a little loud, I'm walking down some stairs. Uh, I think a lot was left out, but uh, at the same time, I think it gave people a real-life look or it's a close look at the indies or a wrestler's life as you can be. Not saying every wrestler was like that, but, you know, especially back in the day, they had a lot, you know, that, that, that were on top and made a lot of money and turned out to be like that, you know what I'm saying? Right, definitely. Um, what are some of the movies that you've worked so that uh, our fans might might know? Oh, dude, I'm I'm working a ton, dude. Like I said, uh, I had a good, uh, you know, it, it, a lot is just like little camera spots, one lines and stuff like that, but it's uh you know, or, or or stunt work where I'll be dressed up as somebody so you won't know it's me. But uh, I, I just did uh last movie I worked on, I worked with Triple H. I had a good fight scene with Triple H on The Chaperone, which will be out in 2011 sometime. Uh, I was on Treme. I just did a, a movie called Mysterious Island, which is a sci-fi movie. I did another sci-fi movie uh, recently. Uh, man, I did uh, Wrong Star of Town with Batista and Rob Van Dam. Uh, I... I mean, I could go on and off stage, dude. I got so much. Like I said, I'm, I'm usually shooting three to four movies a month down here, doing something wrong. Okay, can you talk a little bit about um, the military pro wrestling promotion you're working with? All right, yeah, my, my military, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I got uh, these shows I'm running for the military. It's a free show for all military. We're starting down here in the south right now. Uh, we actually got our first show is October 15th. We got a lot of good talent on. We got a... Uh, Kevin Thorne from WWE is on it. We got Paul Bear. We actually got Paul. You know, WWE allowed him to do our show, uh, which I go way back to with Paul. Paul's one of my first friends in the business. He's from um, just two hours away from me in Mobile. Uh, I got Zach Dowen. Uh, I got Jesse Neal from TNA. Steve Anthony, Wardell Walker, uh, a ton of good guys, man. Uh, Seth DeLay, Patrick Bentley. You know, some of the anarchy, wild side guys. Uh, man, it's, it's going to be a real hard-hitting show. And like I said, it's just basically a thank you for the troops that we're putting on for free. Uh, it's actually, uh, we, you know, we got government funding to do it and everything, but, you know, the troops don't pay nothing to go to it. So, uh, you know, just a thank you to them doing what they do for us, man. And uh, we're going we're gonna to actually try and uh, bring it more places than just out the south and southern region. We're going to try and bring it up north and, uh, you know, ac- across the United States. We're in the process of doing that right now and working on that. Is there a website people can go to to get more information? Yeah, they can check out uh, mpwinfo.com, or you can check us out on uh, Facebook at Military Pro Wrestling. Just type in Military Pro Wrestling. Uh, like I said, I got my, myself along with uh, my partner, uh, Della Cohen, who puts in many, many more hours than I do, man. She, this girl is a workhorse, so uh, she's, a, uh, she's a former uh, military herself, and uh, she, knows, she knows what it is, and it was actually her idea, and she came to me about it. So, uh, you know, I was like, definitely, I got your back on it, because me and her have been friends for a while, so... Now we're just, you know, we're working together trying to, you know, make a successful product for, you know, something else for have boys, another place for the boys to work in, uh, some, someplace else for, you know, for you to see wrestling other than, you know, WWE or TNA. Now, is there anyone in the wrestling business that 
we haven't necessarily talked about tonight that was a that was a really huge influence on you and uh, sort of a mentor? Man, uh, there's a lot. You know what I'm saying? There was some guy. You know, I wouldn't say a lot, but there's guys. You know, all over that I've had you know close relationships with and that I still have close relationships to this day. Uh, like I said, Canyon, man, Canyon helped me a lot. Canyon was uh, another guy who just somebody I absolutely enjoy working out with because, you know, he knew so much. This guy was a student of the game, and, you know, he just knew everything. He can teach you a lot of things that I didn't know or things I needed to learn about the business. You know, Kenyon was a, a genius man. It was, that was a tough loss because he was one of my best friends, and uh, he was close with my son and, you know, close with my other friends. And, you know, uh, everybody, my, my, my family knew him. You know, it was just one, one of those things where, you know, it, it, it wasn't a shock because we I knew, you know, what – what Chris was going through, but uh, it it was a shock when it actually happened because, you know, I wouldn't have expected it to really go that far. He he talked about it and he talked, you know, about how depressed he was and there were many days, you know, we had to talk about a lot of stuff, but when when it came down to it, you know, I I, I didn't picture my life being without Chris, you know what I'm saying? Because he was was a good guy. He was a guy to give you the shirt off his back. I've seen this guy give homeless guys, you know, homeless men money, give, you know, buy people food who didn't have food. Like, uh, after Hurricane Katrina, I didn't have no place to go. Chris was one of the first people to call me up and say, hey, dude, uh, you know, you can come stay at my place for as long as you need to. You know, no bills, no nothing. I'll, you know, I know what would happen, you know, and I just want you to know my door was open. And I ended up going there because uh, my ex-wife and my son, uh, their family lived like 10 minutes away from there, so they wanted to go there too. So we ended up all going there. So, okay. I mean, guys like that, there's, there's, there's so many, you know, there's, there's a lot of influential guys, uh, you know, guys like uh, Alcatraz, Vampiro, uh, Baby Slim, you know, this is a, a Scorpio Sky, friends I made in this business uh, that, you know, I, I'll, I'll love and cherish forever, man, because, you know, without them, you know, we wouldn't, it's a brotherhood and you can't do it alone, you know what I'm saying? So without these guys, wrestling wouldn't be what it is. And those are also names that, you know, a lot of uh – your modern uh, mainstream fans might not be familiar with, but if they have ever seen them, you know they're just just watching them is amazing. Yeah, they, these guys can work, man. It's a shame that you know you don't get to see these guys in the big leagues because you know because they're not somebody's son or they're not uh, you know they they didn't go to uh, you know OBW and train or they didn't go to uh, you know Ring of Honor. It's a shame. That's why. That's why I'm a big believer in people branching out and pulling guys from all over because the United States has so much talent in it that they need to look more into the talent that's you know that that doesn't get so much press. And that, that's part of the magazine's fault. That's part of the internet's fault because a lot of times it's just good for the guys that the internet's talking about or the guys in magazines pressing about. But if you notice, it's always the same guys. They don't branch out any. You know, you might see Brian Danielson in a magazine, you know, two or three or four or five pages every month, you know, when he's in the Ring of Honor. Or guys like, you know, like, go out and, you know, actually spend some time going somewhere else and get guys that you never get to see, you know. Go go to Georgia. Go to Louisiana. Go to uh, Southern California, other than Pro Wrestling Gorilla. You know, go to some of the smaller indie shows where you've got some guys that really stand out and you go, wow, this guy is good. You know, he needs a shot somewhere else. Maybe give him a shot in Ring of Honor. Maybe give him a shot at TNA or, or WWE, you know? Yeah, now, recently on your Facebook page, you made a post that I'm going to read off here. And I'm going to ask you to just elaborate on it a little bit. Uh, you said, I don't live off someone else's legacy. I make my own. I don't need to bite off someone else like they're, like these other lame-ass wrestlers. I always stand ten, toe down, ten toes down. Um, can you talk a little about that quote? And just basically, I, you know, what that means is I always stand on my own two feet. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't feed off anybody else. I don't need to, you know, I don't need to live off somebody else's legacy is what it is, you know. I'm not trying to bite off Shane Douglas when I'm telling Shane, you know, all this stuff. I, I'm, I'm not trying to say, hey, Shane, I want your spot. Shane doesn't have a spot. I'm telling this guy, hey, hang it up, dude. It's time to hang it up. If you want to be part of this wrestling, wrestling business, do something else. Do something backstage. Don't talk like you're going to be, you know, the head honcho of this wrestling promotion, you're not a heavyweight champion no more, dude. You can't cut it. You don't have what it takes, you know? It's another guy's turn to do that spot. And the same goes with TNA and all these other guys. WWE is doing a good job of it now. They're building a younger talent. Look at guys like Sheamus, you know what I'm saying? Look at The Miz. Look at uh, Evan Bourne. 
You know, they 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 know what's going on. They're building the younger talent up that they work with for years, and they give them a spotlight. You don't, you know, that's one thing I can give Trip Ways credit for. As 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 much as Trip Ways has put down your throat, Trip Ways puts guys over. Trip Ways knows the business. You can look at him and see what he does. You know, he put the Undertaker over at WrestleMania. I'm sure if he wanted to, he could have probably broke the streak because he's Trip Ways. You know what I'm saying? He's a superstar, but he's one of you know he's one of the top guys at WWE. Quit. Man, quit living off somebody else. Just you know, I, I can't stand that. Just because you're somebody's son, or or uh, you friends with this person, or uh, you know, or, or you go out with this person, don't 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 you know think that's going to get you somewhere. Work hard for what you want. Right. A lot of people right. say with well, a lot of people say with Triple H that he's where he is because of uh, who he's married to. But my, my response to that is always, you know, he was there before he was married to that person, you know? Exactly. And he had, I mean, like I said, I mean, maybe he not might not be in the position that he's in if he wasn't married to her, but you can't knock that guy for being married to her. I mean, and he still had to go through the ranks to get to her. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure basically, man, if he wanted to, could have shut that down. The guy's a smart guy. I mean, not everybody might not have po- something positive to say about the guy, but you can't knock him for being smart. You can't knock guys like Kevin Nash for being smart. And I don't knock these older guys for staying around and making money like the Stings and the Scott Steiners, like I said. But at the same time, that's a promotions call to who to keep around and who not to keep around, who can contribute to the business and who can't. You know, guys, just because you're old don't mean you don't have anything to contribute. You just might not be able to get in the ring anymore, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and give what you want. It's as bad as you want to. I mean, I love the business. I might not ever want to stop wrestling, but I know at some point I'm going to have to sit down with myself. And it's going to be a long time from now, but then go, hey, I might not have what I had 10 or 20 years ago. It's time for me to, you know, maybe offer myself backstage, you know, offer myself as a manager or offer myself as a commentator or, you know, whatnot. You know, and I just think right now the, market's, the market is over flooded with guys who need to hang it up, you know, and, and, and give – like I said, the young guys are doing man, and I, it, it just—it really pisses me off that they don't. Now, you actually spoke about Evan Bourne a couple minutes ago, and you know, while, while you were coming up and you were wrestling on various indies, and I believe even in TNA, you you uh, got the chance to work with him. Do you have any memories of working oh, yeah. with him? I guess I, you, as, I, as Matt Seidel. Yeah, I worked with him a lot, man. He's another one of my close personal friends, man. Uh, we worked at WSX, we worked at TNA, we worked at Indie Scene, we worked Wildside. You know, we, we we came up together, so uh, I'm glad to see he's in the spot he is. He's a, he's a talented guy, and, uh, much more talented than me, you know what I'm saying? So, like, as far as body control and stuff goes, man, that dude can work wonders. You know, I'll put him up there with the best of the high flyers. I, I don't really consider myself a high flyer, although I've always been considered one, you know. Uh, I, I think I like to let, you know, think I wrestle more of a big man style. And uh, But as far as high flying goes, uh, you know, Matt, Matt's the man, bro. Hats off to him. I'm glad for his success. Yeah, now, um, you you mentioned that uh, you're coming off an injury. You have some more movies you're going to work on coming up. Um, also, you have the uh, Military Pro Wrestling Show coming up. Um, is there anywhere else that you'll be wrestling soon that you'd like to tell our fans about? Uh, I can tell you I got this uh, the Bob Saget Show debut in this December. Uh, it's going to be on the A&E Network. You can check me out on there. It's going to be called Bob Saget Strange Days. And it's a reality show we did with Bob. Uh, you'll see me wrestling at Dragon Gate. Uh, I'll be hitting up the, the northeast section uh, soon, uh, planning on making some tours up there. And uh, really, uh, I'm sure I'll do some more WWE stuff. Uh, I just canceled a tour to England. I got I got in a motorbike accident a few months ago, so uh, I've been down. I guess I got about one more month before I come back. But, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit the market hard, and I'll be back to where I was. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm hitting hard. I'm, I'm gaining weight. and putting on size. I'm in the gym every day, and uh, I'm working out hard. And just uh, trying to better myself, so uh, you'll see me somewhere, you know, somewhere, somewhere you might not expect to see me. So keep your eyes open. Now, that's all I'm gonna say. I got, I got a lot of things in the works, and I had uh, a lot of stuff in the works before I got hurt, and the, the injury put me behind a little bit, but nothing whole, you know, nothing's gonna hold me down. So just keep your eyes open for Luke Hawks in uh, 2010, 2011, and the rest of it. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, just uh, on a personal note, as someone who doesn't get a chance to see a lot of indies, um, you know, I know I'm looking forward to you know seeing you next time you uh, you do a match for WWE or, or whatever. Um, do you have a rib or a road story uh, that you'd like to share with our listeners? 
Let me think. I don't know if I have any uh, that I can actually tell online <laughs> on the air. <laughs> uh, let me think of a good one. You put me on the spot. With there, there, there's, there's always something going on. Uh, nah, I, I can't think of anything. Think anything I mean, there's been a ton of things for you kind of put me on the spot with that one. So uh, there's some guys you can go all day. You know, like uh, I think the best one I ever heard of was from Coco Beware, you know, that, that dude could talk for days. Coco was telling me some more stories about the honor she got. I mean, I, I've been ripped several times and I've ripped people, but, uh, you know, it, it's been something really uh, off the wall or uh, something, uh, something that's probably not even worth talking about. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we had a lot. Well, me, Chad, Farham, and uh, we, the best thing is we used to do is uh, we used to antique people all the time and take pictures of it. So uh, that's something simple but stupid. But, you know, one of the things, it's, it's funnier when you're there. Now you you know one thing you were mentioning earlier was that as a child you just did all the uh, you know all the work the side work at the ECW shows and you met a lot of guys there. Um, you know, and ECW original is one of our co-hosts, the Pitbull Gary Wolf. Do you have any memories of him? Did you ever get a chance to meet him? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I worked with Gary a few times in the Philly scene. Uh, you can ask Gary about me. Uh, when when they had PWU, uh, I was one of the top heels of PWU, so I worked with Gary a few times. I've never wrestled him, but uh, managed against uh, he managed against me in some of my matches when he was managing uh, Aramis and uh, Pete Hunter and a few other guys in that area. You know, so I always had some uh, some you know I always had some good talks with Gary and uh, Gary's a good guy. You know, yeah. I always I always had uh, nothing negative to say about Gary. Gary's always been positive and always, you know, a nice guy and a gentleman. So I enjoyed working with him. Had some fun working with him back in those days. Now, one more guy I want to know if you had any memories of. Uh, unfortunately, is another guy who uh, recently who we recently lost. Uh, Trent Acid. Did you have any memories of Trent? Oh yeah, Trent. Uh, I mean, Trent was a cool guy. I can't stand his part of Johnny Cashmere was always a piece of garbage. You know, uh, a dude should be another dude who should be shot in the face. <laughs> Piece of trash, man. I'm serious, but that dude's a scumbag. Scum is scum. There's a few guys on the indie scene that I can't stand, and I can go on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd rather not waste my time talking about those guys. But uh, Trent Trent was always a cool guy, and he had his demons. You know, he was a good worker, and, you know, unfortunately, he let his demons get the best of him. And, uh, I mean, the sad thing is, you know, is he going to be a wake-up call or somebody? Probably not, because, guys, you know, it happens all the time. The, the good thing is, that it's not as bad as it used to be. There's a lot more straight edge guys, a lot more young guys who are, uh, you know, who, who don't do any of that stuff now in the business and uh, stay away from them. They're, they'll they'll always be the guys that do. You know, it's like in any sport, there's always the guys that you know get in trouble for DUIs and blah blah blah. But you know, I'm just glad it's not as bad as it used to be. Now, is there any one guy that you look at right now, whether they be in WWE, TNA, or or on the Indies? And you look at it, and you just say to yourself, "That guy's got it." That guy's got it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Miz is doing a good job, bro. As much as uh, people hate him, and uh, he does a good job on TV, that guy makes people not, you know, not be able to stand him. Uh, there's, you know, there's other guys on any. Steve Anthony's a guy to me who's amazing. That hasn't broke out anywhere yet. Uh, I don't know if y'all familiar with him. He. Uh, he was Harley Race's head trainer. He's from Louisiana, but he's Harley Race's head trainer. He's been back and forth to Japan a few times. He's uh, done a bunch of job matches with WWE. Uh, he's, uh, let's see, he he wrestles in Vegas sometimes when he talks a lot, all alley stuff. But, uh, he, man, good good guy. This guy's just got it. You know, good body, great worker, uh, you know, good look to him. He's one of those guys where he's good. Man, how come that guy hasn't been picked up yet, you know? No, and of no. course, you know, no. I, I'm doing my own thing. I, I, like I said, you know, if, if guys wonder why I haven't been picked up or why I haven't done why I haven't done certain things yet, it's because you know, some, remember, sometimes I, I've, I've chosen not to. You know, some things I've turned down, some things, uh, you know, because I, I have other options going on. I, I, I'm not the kind of guy that, that just can't make a move tomorrow because you know I, I have a family support. My son's about to be 12 years old, and you know I, I can't just get up and move for wrestling like I used to back in my day. So. And, and not to mention my movie work's going through, so I couldn't take the contract somewhere where it's just going to cut out, you know. What, it, it would be stupid of me to take a contract somewhere and accept less money than the money I'm making now when I'm doing my movies and wrestling and doing, you know, doing a little of both of what I would want to do. So, and working on the stuff I want to work on. 
Now, now we have a caller on the line here. Uh, he is the host of our sister show, The Wrestling Soup. You can hear it every Thursdays, every Thursday night at 11.15 Eastern. Uh, we have Anthony Missionary Thomas on the line. Uh, Anthony, are you with us? Yeah, I am. How's it going, gentlemen? Hey, Anthony. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, not much. Hey, Luke, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. You know, uh, obviously, uh, you know, I was a huge fan of of various indie XPW, uh, uh, Ultra Boy Luke. Um, I I really did have kind of a curious question, though, especially with all the uh, the supposed stuff that went on with Rob Black and everything else like that. Are you privy to talk about any of that or no? No, I can talk about whatever I want. I just don't like to give that dude Tom Day because, you know, he's not around no more, and, you know, he's he's nothing to me and he's nothing to the wrestling business. So, I mean, take for granted, without him, there wouldn't have been an XPW. But at the same time, you know, the dude's, just, you know, he, he he's not, who cares about Rob Black? You know, what is he doing today, you know? He, right, nothing. right. No, no, no. I, I mean, if you, I, I I'll ask agree. you questions, just... you got a question, I don't mind. I was just kind of curious if if you ever, uh, I mean, if you ever saw some of the stuff that was supposedly going on in the back room with him. I mean, we're just going by internet wrestling community standards. Like, I'm not an insider, you know, so I don't really know what happened in the back. But, I mean, everybody hears rumors of what was going on, you know, like how much of that stuff was true. Uh, I mean, to be honest, you'd have to name me some events. I've never really seen nothing out of place. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, but in, and I don't look into too much of the internet stuff too, because a lot of a lot of it's just hype or bullshit, or somebody makes up something right. and tell. You know, anybody can get online and put a story on the internet. Is it true? No. You know what I'm saying? Half, half the time, ninety percent of the time, it's not true. Some stuff is, but I mean, look at all the stuff you see about guys in TNA or WWE or all these other promotions. That right. ain't true. You know, some, somebody has heat with this, somebody has heat with that, or this or that. You know, like like people just make up BS and you know. Like I said, that's the bad thing about the internet. Anybody can get on and put something about somebody on there, but it doesn't mean it's true. So, you know, that's that's actually you know you couldn't have put it any better. Uh, I think that's about the best way to put it. Um, kind of curious though too. Like, who was your biggest inspiration, especially dealing with all the guys from back then, from Sabu to Shane Douglas to, gosh, so many different guys. Who was your inspiration back then? Oh, uh, Vic, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Because Vic, uh, no matter what, was one of the hardest workers. You know, he was a big guy, and uh, he wanted to work like a little guy. And, he, you know, he just his attitude on everything. There's, there's a few guys with just had a good attitude and wanted to, uh, you know, wanted to build more, wasn't worried so much about their self. They were more worried about, you know, the company and the other guys in a whole that's more worried about what's going on with the self. And that's always re- really, really appreciative, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, that's very cool. Yeah, I mean, like, um, you know, after after you left, what was it like? Um, what was the feeling that you had when when it finally shut down? Oh, uh, I mean, of course, uh, I wasn't really happy about it, but at the same time, you know, there was nothing I could do about it. Uh, it, it, it was a job, you know, and it was a, it was another right. place for people to make money and, and make a name for themselves. But uh, at the same time, you know, it robs DS and, and and you know. It really mixed feelings. I'm glad that it's had a couple of shows since then. I mean, you never know. You might see more of it in the future. You know what I'm saying? Without with, with the scumbag. <laughs> uh, we, we hope so. You know, there's a lot of us that still pray for uh, some hardcore wrestling to come back around. You know, I mean, there's obviously a couple places still left, like CZW and uh, IWA and stuff like yeah, that. But, but for the most part... part uh, let me cut you off right there. Not to sound like a jerk, but XPW wasn't just about hardcore wrestling. It had a name for that, you know, and uh, they, they made a, a, a good career with, with a lot of those guys doing that. But, I mean, look at some of the other guys who went through there and, and came out and just had, you know, great, great wrestling matches. Not, you know... Not hardcore. I mean, look at chaos. Look at look at me. Look at uh, the Chris Candidos when they were there. The Johnny Storms. Oh yeah. Uh, the Jerry Ryan's. Uh, I mean, uh, Scorpio Sky, uh, uh, Super Dragon. Those yeah. guys. You know, like, there's, there's a ton of guys from that era, and, and, and even you know the later era on the on the after shows, the, the later shows that had just great wrestling matches. And towards the end of it, they tried to focus not so much on the hardcore and put it more into good wrestling matches. I I completely stand corrected. I actually, I didn't mean hardcore in the sense of, like, um, some garbage matches or anything else like that. I'm, I kind of mean the atmosphere. I, I kind of miss the atmosphere, the hardcore fans, the hardcore look. 
you know, just oh, the, yeah. the, the grit and grime. I mean, even with even without the actual, you know, hardcore matches, there was a feeling that was an XPW that was shared by people on the East Coast and ECW, et cetera, et cetera. And you can go down. It, it's it's kind oh, of like a feeling that I miss. I can tell you this, man. The, the scenery around the United States is completely different everywhere. The fans are different in Philly. The, the fans are different in L.A. They're different in the North and they're different in the South. Uh, you know, Philly is more the, the, the smart mark. They think they know everything. You know, uh, if, if if you don't get a lot of Internet press, they, you know, if a guy comes out and he don't have a lot of Internet press in Philly, he doesn't really get a good pop. You know what I'm saying? If there's not a lot going on the bottom, he doesn't get a good pop just from coming out. You know, you got to go out there and you got to, bust your balls, which, you know, you, you bust your balls anyway, but you got to bust your balls, right. and you have to really make them see something you for them to give you a respect. And that's because the market's so overflooded there with, with shows and wrestling, you know. In L.A., you know, there's more of the bloodthirsty fans that, you know, see a little bit here and there, but they, and, and a lot of Lucha fans. And the South, it's real old school. You come down here and you do a 450, they come out the seat because they don't know what they just seen. You know what I'm saying? Down here in the <laughs> South, it's still old school. You get that old school heat where, you know, the fans literally want to kill you. You can't, I mean, I've seen guys get stabbed. I've seen guys, uh, a guy named, uh, uh, man, what, what's, uh, what is Joey's? So anyway, it's got Joey. I forget his last name. We were at a show in Mississippi. And uh, Joey was wrestling, and he went out into the crowd. An uh, old lady took a box cutter and sliced his back open because he was being a heel. And uh, he was beating up the wow. guy in the crowd, maybe facing the crowd. Old lady came from behind, sliced his back open with a box cutter. That's how old school, I mean, I, that's ruthless, bro. But you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We don't want that to happen. <laughs> but at the same time, right, right. we like, you know, in, in the South, wrestling is what it was, you know, back like in Memphis in the 70s and the 80s, you know, they, they get into it. So, it, you know, it ain't for the Internet fans. Like, you can bring a... a uh, 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 you know, in, in the top guy from Ring of Honor, or you know, uh, a Tyler Black, or or Jerry Ryan, or uh, or Brian Danielson, or you know, anybody here, and you know, they they're not going to know who they are because you know they're not on main. If you're not in WWE, they don't even really know about TNA too much down here. If you're not on WWE, they really don't know who you are, but they still respect wrestling as a whole. And you know, you can you can be easily be a star here. You know what I'm saying? Like that's. Uh, right. And, and get over. You don't have to come out here and do uh, a, a five star, you know, match and, and, and kill yourself. It's, it's great, man. I mean, I'm not complaining about it. It's great because you know I love that old school feeling. I love the feeling of. Uh, See, that blows you know, my and, mind. And you can I, I, yeah. Oh no, no, no go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just saying. You know what? That blows my mind. I'm from Chicago. Get into it. With, with, yeah, exactly. When you can come out here and uh ball around the ring a little bit, and, and, and you know what I'm saying? And, and you can still use a drop kick as a finisher down here because, you know, they're into it. That's awesome. You know what I'm saying? That and, is. And now up there, you do that up there, and they're going to freak out because they're going to go, oh, well, uh, you know, you didn't super power bomb this guy off the top <laughs> over and hit him with a chair and put him to a table. <laughs> how do you, how you, you know, it's like, come on, bro. Where's your triple plancha? <laughs> yeah, Exactly. That's wild. Yeah, you know what? That's kind of funny because I mean, it, it was actually a shock to me. Um, you know, we we had Big Vito on the show, and and he was talking about uh, uh, his his match that he had down there in Argentina, where the entire fans erupted and they all started whipping chairs in the ring, and they tried, you know, stabbing him and everything else like that. And that blew my mind. Just thinking, like, wow, wrestling fans are still that oh, yeah. hardcore, and, and just to hear about it in the you know, in in the U.S. That's that's oh, yeah. even more amazing. Dude, that that's anywhere in. Uh... That's anywhere in the, in the South, like Mexico, uh, Puerto Rico, all those places like that. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you That's can't. Wild. The, the fans, the fans there are, are, are real. And I mean, it's good, but it's dangerous at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know what they expect. You kind of, kind of gives you a little rush, but gives you a little scare at the same time because you're hoping you'll be shot <laughs> or, you know, hit with a spark plug in the eye or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it's, yeah. See, I guess we kind of take it for granted up here. I mean, like I said, I'm Chicago. I'm sure New York, Cali fans, I'm sure we all kind of take it for granted because we got the Internet. We've got every single wrestling indie match in the world available that, you know, our fingertips to buy for a DVD or whatever, you know, and it, 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 
we're yeah. kind of like focused worldwide. So it, it's kind of wild to, to to hear that there's still people that really don't have that global exposure to wrestling other than probably WWE and TNA, like you were saying, that they actually are still so hardcore. Right. Do you miss kayfabe? Then do you miss the days of kayfabe? Oh, I mean, it, just you as a person. I miss it. I miss it. I miss it tremendously. I think wrestling's so overexposed. It's not funny, and it's a shame, man, because. You know, everybody thinks they know about the business, and everybody, you know, just because they, like I said so earlier, just because they read something on the internet, they think they know everything about the business. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. You go to Philly, you talk. Not, not that Philly's bad. I love Philly. Philly's one of my second homes when it comes to wrestling. I had a lot of wrestling up there, but it's so different. And I made friends with a lot of fans up there. But the thing is, you know, a lot of guys up there, they just think, you know, they they, they overthink everything and they, they they put too much into it, and they, you know, it's overanalyzed, over, you know, and and overdone. And it, it, I think it hurts the business and it sucks. So, uh, so that's pretty much what happens is when, when, like, let's just say, for example, the fans in Phillies watch a match, and let's say somebody screws up in the ring, they're the first ones to pounce on it, as opposed to whereas somewhere right. in the South, you know, they don't necessarily notice that right away, or if they do, they're just, you know, uh, uh, courteous about it. Right. 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 And I mean, it happens. I mean, the, the, the UF up chance are cool. But uh, it's it's just a matter, you know. It, it, the the sad thing about it is they'll eat your lives. So if you got green guys that go out there and they try and have, say, you give two guys an opportunity that might not ever have that opportunity again, and they get out there and uh, you know something goes wrong. So it could be something simple that they even fault. They slip or you know whatever. There's baby oil right. on the ropes from the last guy who wrestled. You know, so they're having a hard time with something they they're trying to do or something they do really well and they can't pull it off, and the fans eat them up for it. And, you know, one one bad move can lead to another bad move. You never know. But the thing is, yeah. it might blow an opportunity that they really deserve or they should get another a chance at, you know what I'm saying? So because the fans eat it up so much, it kind of leans on the promoters to go, hey, uh, well, we're not going to bring this guy back because he didn't do that good, you know. And it may or, or yeah. the fans didn't like him or wasn't his fault. Instead of instead of giving a guy an opportunity, 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 and letting guys learn. And uh, the thing about that up there is that there's enough work up there for these guys to go other places and work and do other stuff. And, and, right. and then you know, it, but like I said, it's all about opportunity. You know, I can tell you, like when I was up there, I didn't get the best opportunity with CGW. That's why I quit CGW. Zandig, I was seen as an outsider. Zandig booked me, and uh, they wanted this idea to bring me in, wow. but. At the same time, they put me under like my first five matches and didn't give me, they didn't want to give me anything. I should have fought, and I, I was kind of quiet when I went up there first because you know I was skeptical because of the XPW, CCW heat. I had some friends up there like uh, you know Justice Payne and a few other guys that that I knew already and a few guys that CCW locker room that I got along with. But at the same time, I didn't know you know you can go into a new atmosphere like that where you're the only outsider there and everybody else is you know a brotherhood. You, you, you're skeptical. So my first that, that amazes there, me. You would think that these guys know you for so long. It would just kind of be like, hey, come on over, Luke. You know, hey, what the fuck, man? Have a beer. You know, I don't know. No, don't it was, know. It that's was what. Like, I, hey, you know, some guys were, but some guys were like, hey, you know, he's an outsider. He's not one of us. He was with this promotion, blah blah blah. And uh, I'm not saying I didn't get along, but I, the thing was, they 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 buried me, and then you know, instead of giving me a chance to get over with the fans, when I could, you know. When I, when, I, when I could hang with the best of them, instead of giving me a chance to get over and, and put me over and doing stuff with me, they buried me. And then, you know, I had a talk with Zandig. I said, look, dude, you, you're killing me here. If you're not going to do something with me, then, uh, you know, I'm going to take my talent elsewhere. And that's when I had the opportunity to go to huh. the WU. And Zandig's like, well, you're really not getting over. And I'm like, well, maybe because you're burying me and I'm not getting anything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're not, you know, you, you want me to go out there and do this instead of giving me a chance to shine. And you put me in there with right, guys right. who can't go. So they put me in there. You'd be more you than know, a piece of coal. They put me in there with, with with the guys like Derek Fisher at the time. You know what I'm saying? I mean yeah. Derek Fraser. I'm sorry. So they put me in there with Derek Fraser. It's for guys like that at the time, or 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 some of the top guys that can go there. You know, you put me in there with guys like Adam Flash, who is horrible, or guys. You know, like I uh, who else? You know, I, I don't know. It's just you know, it's just one of those things, dude. It's like I, I had to get you know. When, when I decided to jump to PWU, it was the best decision for me, and I started getting the good guys, you know, and started having top matches and showing, really getting to showcase my talents in Philly. So, uh, mm-hmm. and, you know, and I know they're, uh, 
Ninja High took over CZW now. So I, I don't know how much has changed since then, but uh, it was just, it was just weird, man. Because it was you know I, I got nothing against Hand Digging those guys. You know I'm always good for a successful company, and I'm glad they've been around as long. But at the same time, it was like, don't treat me like an outsider if I haven't done nothing to you. Right. You know and you should give me the same respect I give you guys. So. That's kind of fucked up. I, I, pardon me. I, I know I'm supposed to keep it clean. Sorry about that, Andrew. Um, <laughs> don't worry about it. It's, it's just I, I really wouldn't expect it. I mean, seriously. I mean, XPW is pretty renowned for a lot of things, and it's just kind of like you were a part of it. It's kind of like being a part of ECW. You think that you know the guys that would come from XPW, ECW, places like that, and go somewhere else would be like, yeah, come on it. This is, but you know what? This is just coming from a fan's perspective. This is what I think is a fan. You know what I mean? Obviously, I don't know. I'm not going to pretend I know stuff like that. You know what I mean? But here's well, another question. If I don't know who Luke Hawks is or I don't know who, who New Orleans Bad Boy is, what matches of yours would you recommend me to see? I mean, you can YouTube. I mean, that's the best way to type in Luke Hawks. And, uh, you know what I'm saying, you'll, you'll pull up some stuff. Uh, anything. Well, like, what's I your mean, favorite I, match? Like what I'm my, my favorite match? Yeah. i probably have to go with. Uh, my three ways in PWU, some of them. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of good all my matches with Vic when I first broke in because I really didn't know that much back then. And, uh, you know what I'm saying, I was learning, but at the same time, I was, I, you know, me and Vic were killing it, and I was just enjoying it because not only was I learning, but we, we were blowing the cards away, you know what I'm saying? Nobody could keep up with us. So, uh, I mean, that, that, all, all matches against uh, – Let's see some of my some of my WSX matches. Dude, I, I've had so many you know matches that I love. I, I don't know if there's <laughs> one that really 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 stands out. So I think my favorite matches are three ways though. Some of my three ways. Oh okay, like the one with Jack Evans and uh, Scorpio Sky. Exactly, that's a perfect one, dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just I, I love I love doing three ways, and uh, you know, that's why I did the King of Three Ways for a while. You know what I'm saying? I, I've never been beaten three ways. You know, so it's like. That's, hmm. that's the thing, man. It, three ways of fun if you know how to do them because I like to do them and do do, do things that people haven't done. Not the stuff you've already seen a hundred times before. And I like to, I like things that make sense. And I like to, you know, I, right. I, like, to, I like to try and entertain people. And, you know, if I, if I can make somebody hate me or if I can make somebody love me, then I'm doing my job. Absolutely, man. Hey, it was a pleasure asking you questions, Luke. I wish you the best in, in, in your future, man. Right. I hope you get it to WWE. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Now, now Luke, my last question is, uh, do you have any messages you'd like to give your fans? Uh, thanks for the support, man. I mean, that's about it. Keep, keep on keeping on. And, uh, you know, don't give up. And, you know, like I said, keep your head to anything. You can do whatever you want to do. Uh, just live in reality. Don't live in a fairy tale. You know what I'm saying? If you want something, work for it. And we'll keep you know, no matter what, no matter no matter what your situation is, don't mean uh, you know you, you got to be what, what your parents were, or, or you know if you grew up poor, or you didn't have much. Don't mean you have to live like that for the rest of your life. You know if you want to go get it, you know if you if you if you grew up and your dad's a doctor, and you know you don't want to be a doctor, you want to be a football player or a wrestler, or you know you want to be an electrician. Do what you want to do, no matter what it is. Do what you want to do. You know, just make sure it's in reality. That's a that's a great way to close. And uh, in closing, fans, I definitely want to let everyone know to check out uh, Military Pro Wrestling at uh, uh, mpwinfo.com. mpwinfo.com. Also, uh, Facebook page. Uh, Luke, I just want to, on behalf of JT and of course Missionary here, I just want to thank you for coming on and uh, giving us all your insight. Yeah, I appreciate y'all having me, brother.